All right, folks, let's begin. Okay, so uh, you guys need to go through the fundamentals of uh, learning unit nine. So please make sure that you do actually go and look at yesterday's lecture. Uh, I actually think this is easier than learning unit eight. Um, we are using the same approach. Your assumptions, after your assumptions, uh, and when I say assumptions, I'm talking about H1 and H0, and then hypothesis and alternative. Then from there, you are then looking at your decision rule. After you get your decision rule, you must then calculate your chi uh, statistic. And then step number four, you're comparing your decision rule with your chi statistic. And then you're determining, are you going to reject your, what's it? Yes. It's still following the six steps from then unit eight. Okay. You're just using a different hypothesis. Or, or should I say, um, using the chi test, chi squared test. So rather than, in the other one, what were we using? What was the test that we were using? We're using the Z statistic and we're using the T statistic as well. Yes. And with the chi squared test, it's a test on categorical data. Okay? With the learning unit A, we were looking at numerical data. Okay? If you've forgotten what uh, categorical data is, we're basically talking about data that is not number, but not numeric. Okay? So, yeah, please do go through that. I will upload the slides. I know guys, I haven't uploaded it in so much time. But I will do that after this session. Today, I don't think we'll take that long because we only have yeah, revision exercise three and revision exercise one to do. And then that'll be it for today. Okay, so let's get into it. So if we can turn to revision exercise three. Revision exercise three. They did share with you the homework was to do these two on the WhatsApp group. There's the one gentleman who just woke up now. Oh, that's him. And then there was the other gentleman. I, I don't know their name. Yeah, no. Yeah. Ah, I trusted you to come to class. I trusted the wrong people. I trusted the wrong people. <laughs> Guys, just, just make sure to stay. That's all I'm saying. 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 That's all Really? This this yeah. past test too? Yeah. Between what and what? Uh, yeah, question three and so there was question A and then there was the B. Oh. So what happened? Okay. <laughs> you even chose. Okay. No, we'll leave that one. Let's 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 go on to what we came here for today. So let's read this question. Let's see what's happening. Okay. So here, actually, I'm not supposed to be using this one. Ah, uh, actually, no, no, no. I do need this one. So uh, here it says, a researcher wishes to investigate whether the proportion of smokers within different age groups is the same. The question asked was, 
have you smoked at least one cigarette per day in the past week? The results of the survey are as follows. Are as follows. Okay. And then that at the bottom says, is there evidence to indicate that the proportion of smokers is different for each age group? Okay. Right. So what we're looking at, evidence to indicate that the proportion of smokers is different for each age group. Let me just double check that we are recording. Okay, sharp. All right, and test at a 5% level of significance. Okay, yesterday there was a question, will they always give you your level of significance? Yes, they will. Okay, uh, so here, a researcher wishes to investigate whether the proportion of smokers within different age groups is the same. Okay, so there we have our different age groups. We have 18 to 29, 30 to 49, 50 to 64, and 65 and older. Okay. So now, before you can even go any further, you have to first have the totals on these on this table, okay? So if you add up the first row where you have smoked, what do you get? What do you get? Okay. So here you have 77. Okay, next row. Two, four, three. Okay, maybe let me zoom in a little bit more so I can try and make it neat. So it is clear. Two, four, three, and 77. Okay. That means that our total here at the bottom is 320. Okay. And then the total on the columns, this is going to be 80, 80, 80 and 80. Okay, right. Now that that's out the way, we now need to begin with our steps. Number one. Okay, number one, we're asking ourselves, what are our assumptions? For H0, or the nil hypothesis, and for H1. What are our assumptions? Okay, so yesterday we established that in the nil hypothesis, we always want the equal sign, okay? Right, so in this particular case, we are looking at are the age groups, the proportion of smokers within the different age groups, are they the same, right? That's what they're proposing here. That's the management claim. Isn't it? So, in H0, we're going to say the age groups, uh, proportion of smokers of smokers in different age groups is the same. Right? That's our first assumption. And then for H1, like we mentioned yesterday, you simply say HO is not true. So, 
Llevo. Yes. Yeah. Because this is, this is, can you see, here we're dealing with groups. We're not dealing with single numbers to say, is the pro what is the probability of uh, X being more than or less than a certain value? So here, can you see, we have the group of 18 to 29. We have the group of 30 to 39. So can you see we've got different 18? And what we are trying to assess, we're not actually trying to assess a numerical thing. We're trying to assess proportion wise. Smokers in this age group, in the first age group, right? Is it the same as the number of smokers in the other age group? That's what we're trying to assess. Okay? So, step number one, as you've seen, we've done our assumption. The next thing we need to do is our decision rule. So number two, number two, is your decision rule. And we know when we say decision rule, we're basically saying, when do we reject and when do we accept the nil hypothesis? So here, before we can decide on when to reject or accept the decision rule, we need to find out the degrees of freedom, okay? To do that, degrees of freedom, the formula here is rho minus one times your column minus one. So in this particular situation, how many rows do we have? We have smoke and we have did not smoke. So how many rows? We have two. Okay, so R is two. So here we have two minus one. And then here, how many columns do we have? We have four, hundred percent minus one. So there you can see you have one times three. So our degrees of freedom are equal to three. Yep. I do not know what just happened there. Let's zoom out a little bit. It's three. Okay. But we don't end there. The other thing we need to look at is our fish <laughs> or our alpha. All right. Or our degree, um, level of significance, which they told us is 5% which is the same as 0 0.05, okay? Now with this, we can now establish what is our chai crit, okay? Your chai crit. So this, now we know, we only get off of your chai distribution table which you guys have in the back. And this is what I was telling you, uh, you don't have these degrees of freedom formulas. So you guys need to, I, like I was saying earlier, you need to create your own formula sheet for each of the learning units. Because clearly here and there, here and there, or this formula isn't expressed in a way that's easy to remember, where you can just plug in values and get the right stuff. So please make sure that you make a formula sheet for each of your learning units. So that is the formula to get your um, chai set. The, the so we're looking at table three in your work pack. That's your chai distribution table. It's on page 182. Okay, so how do we find our child crit or criteria? If you want to say it in book. And we simply, if you look at the first column on your child squared distribution table, right, you'll see that our degree of freedom, we said, is three. So you need to look for three. 
then you need to say, okay, but then what level of significance did we? 0 0.05. So then you look for the column where you have 0 0.05. Yes, so that is now what we are comparing our chai stat with, 7.815, okay? And this is why I say this, I feel, is more easier than learning unit 8, because here you are always going to say in your decision rule, if our chai stat is greater than, sorry, let me do that again, greater than 7.815, then we reject the nil hypothesis, okay? Then we reject the nil hypothesis. So now we've completed our decision rule, step number two. To the bottom. I'm at the bottom. This is the bottom. Yes. We haven't yet calculated the time. We are just, no, we're not done. Some of the help, how fast? Where do you Sorry, you guys can't see. Let me zoom out a little bit because. Okay, so we've only done step two now. We still have step three, four, and five. Yes, ma'am? The degrees of freedom. And I would advise that you also go through your slides as well, just to add a better theoretical understanding of what is going on. When do I use this degree of freedom? Yes. Yes. It's part of your formulation. So now we're going to calculate the stat. Now we have to calculate the chai statistic. So, step number three, let's get into step number three. So here, we need to calculate the expected value and your chai stat. Okay, so Uh, please check if you have this formula in your formula sheet. This is the formula you use to get your expected value. It is as follows. You have Fe, which is your expected, uh, is equals to the rho total. times your column total, you found the formula. Is it the same? It might be different. It might be the formula for your, 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 your chai statistic, but just double check, divided by your sample total. Or grand total. Which letters? I don't know what you mean. Okay, mm. The, the 
symbols. The symbols. Yeah. I don't I don't have the symbols. Like, like A times B over X like, and yeah. They don't have the do you guys have the formula with the symbols? Yeah. I think the formula you're looking at is not the same formula. Yeah. Yeah. That's, how, that's how I'm saying that your formula is just as you're getting it, right? It's not got, it hasn't got everything that you need. This this formula is not the formula. This formula is how we get our um what is this the type uh statistic. Okay, so this when we want the sum of all of our which you'll see just like for you know, step by step by step. We need this what 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 they have here is F E. That's the expected of the So can you see we need the expected in order to calculate this? This is the <laughs> yeah, it's a J this thing. It's a, we have it around. From from where? From uh, correlation? I've been saying that there's things missing here. Ah, I've been highlighting that. We need to put brackets over this, otherwise, you're going to multiply funny things. From the beginning. From the beginning. Mm. Hmm. I the problem is, it doesn't come to every class. But it's just one class. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. So, what we are basically trying to do here is we're now trying to build a table. Okay, and here we go by the category. Remember our category is age. Okay, so age. Okay, and the ages that we have, we have 18 to 29. Okay, that's the first age that we have. And we have those that smoke and those that don't smoke. So I'm just going to call it non-smokers. Okay, in your book, they've said do not smoke, okay, which is the same, isn't it? So here, let me, should have maybe used a different color here, but it's fine. So here, let's just draw those lines. Um, so here you have the observed, which is F0, okay? So this is already in our table. Then you have FE, which is the expected, which is what we are about to calculate just now, okay? And then after that, you now have the formula which you guys now have, which is the following, and this is how we get our chi square uh statistic okay so here you've got f zero minus your f e expected then divided by f e is that right uh, this is squared sorry divided by f e okay right and uh okay i'll show you that now oh goodness me let me erase this Right. Okay, so here now. Okay, so this is for that age group. Then we go to the next age group, which is 29 or 30, sorry, to 39, okay? Let me just split these lines here, right? And then we go to the next one, which is 40 to 49. 
No, sorry, it's 50. Hmm? 30 to 49, to 30, yeah, to 49, sorry. 49. Yebo, Yebo. Yes, but we 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 need a table to put those values in. You get it? We need a table to put those values in. Because what you're talking about is calculation of the expected. So here, that's where this is, these are those are all gonna go. We're gonna calculate just now. Are you with me? No. What 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 what? Answer your ask your question again. Yes. So I see just putting in numbers, the 77 times 246 divided by 248, and then the total value. The 77 times 243 divided by 248. No. No. Yeah, you, remember, let's, let's, let me show you how you so for instance let's deal with the first one so here under 18 to 20 the first one that we have is 23 on the observer so here we've got 23 for smokers and for non-smokers we have 57 can you see that so here in order to get the expected because observe they've given us right we don't need to calculate anything there in order to get this which is what you are calculating i don't know if you know it or not but that's what you're calculating we have to apply this formula here okay so the row for 23 is 77 as you mentioned okay right then times the column but the column in which 23 lands or finds itself which is what she was saying eight so the call it will be 77 times 80. Then divided by the entire or grand total, all right, or sample total, which is now your 320. Okay, you calculate that, and that's when you now get the expected value for the smokers, which is going to give you what? exactly 19.25 okay and now these two add up to 80 so even you expected must add up to the same total of 80 so you can either calculate to say okay to get the 57 expected you can say okay 77 no that's now 243 times 80 because that's still in the same column divided by 320 which gives you that's it that's all you'll be fine come guys what are we getting when we calculate the as I continue with my table here. 60.75. Okay. Yes. 60.75. Okay. Right. So that you now have to do for all of your values. Okay. This is long in the exam, but yesterday we checked. We get like 20 marks. Uh, for, 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 for a unit 8, unit 9, type of thing. So, if, and, and, and we did it yesterday. If you master the test, you're just saying, so it makes a huge difference. 
Is it not 120? So smokers, non-smokers, smoker, non-smoker, then what, 65 and older. Yeah, you have to. <clears throat> Otherwise, uh, it's going to be rough. Okay. So, again, here it's going to be 20... Then 60, and here's going to be 22, and 58, 12, and 68. Okay. Right. So, guys, let's quickly calculate another two of the expected, because I want you guys to walk away knowing how to do this. Because if you can't calculate the expected, you're going to have problems. Okay. And this is what I was saying, that in your... In your, in your, even in your work time, when you look at the output, they don't break down how are they arriving at these values pertaining to the expected. All right? So please make sure you're comfortable with this. So here, again, how are we getting our smokers expected for the age of 30 to 49? We're then saying, if we look at 20, that row, again, let me do it on the side here. We're saying 77 times the column of 80 divided by 320, which again, you can see it's the same calculation as here. So you're going to get 919.25 again. Okay. For this one, for 20. Non, uh, for the smoker under the age group of 30 to 49. So it goes back to the formula. Row total. Where do you, where, what's the row total for 20? For the smoker from 30 to uh, from 30 yeah, to 49. What is the row total here for this value here in your table that they've given you? It's 77, right? So you plug in 77. Remember, we're using this formula here. Row total times column total divided by your sample total. To get the FE. Yes, to get the FE, the expected. Okay? So 77 times 80, 80 is the total on the column. Can you see it? Okay. And then divided by our total sample of 320. Does it make sense? You got the answer. Okay. Right. Any questions? Are we together? Yes. All right. So how did you get the 677 Same thing. So let me raise here and make space for myself. So we are we're applying the formula again to for that. Let's look at 60. So 60, what is the row total for this 60 value here? What is the row total? Row total? 243. And then times your column total, which is what? 80 divided by what's our total sample? 320. And that gives us? 60.75. Okay, which is the same. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. In this particular case. But as the gentleman at the back there saw yesterday, it's not always the same. Yeah. It happens, it happens. Okay. Okay. Right. So, in this particular case, as we mentioned, it was the same. So, either way, you're going to need to know how to calculate the expected. Okay. Okay, now we are applying that formula that you guys have in your in your work packs where we're getting our chai stat, but for each of the respective variables. So in order to get our chai stat, remember we want the total, isn't it? So we want the summation of this thing. We don't want the individual one, okay? So here is where we'll now get the total. Okay, when we add up each of the individual ones. But to calculate, let's say the first one, we're saying our observed data gave us 23. I'm following this formula here. 23 was our observed. F0 is your observed. Minus our expected, which we just calculated, which is 19.25. Okay, divided... Uh, sorry, squared, divided by the expected of 19.25. What do you get? You said 14. Oh, no. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Here you should get 0 0.73. Here you should get 0 0.23. 0 0.03. Yes? So when you minus 23 from 19.25, what do you get? You do that first, isn't it? Then whatever you the, whatever that result is, you now square it. Then when you've squared it, then you divide by 19.25. Are you getting it? Okay. You must be friends with your calculator, otherwise. And then finally, 0 0.87. So then your total chai statistic is now 5.11. Okay? So this now is what we are comparing. So that this was step number three. Can you see? First thing was to get the expected value. After getting the expected value, we then calculated the chai statistic or chai stat. This is why I was saying steps. It's a process. So now, now let's go to step number four. And we're going to finish just now. So we're comparing, compare to, in other words, our decision rule and three, our chai statistic. So our chai statistic is 5.11. But what was our decision rule? What did we say? 7.815. 7.815. And here you can see that our chai statistic is less than our... What are we calling this? It's our chai what? Critique. 
Yes, we can call it chai creep. It's fine. But the whole point is that it is our chai statistic is less than our chai crit. So what does that tell us? Remember, our decision rule was if it's greater, we reject that nil hypothesis. So if it is less than, we then accept. And you finish now step number four. Step number five, we then say, this is now where you need to provide the management conclusion. What's the conclusion of our experiment or our results or our hypothesis testing? Here we are saying, remember, we were saying that in the beginning we said, we can even go back if you need to reference, we said uh, H0, all the different age groups, the proportion of smokers is the same, isn't it? That was our H0 assumption, our null hypothesis assumption. So if we're not rejecting it, that means that we accept that assumption to be true. So we simply say, we do not reject H0. Let me write it. We do not reject H0 at... This was uh, 0 0.05, ne? 5%. Okay? You have to mention this. Because remember, the test can be run at 10%, can be run at 1%. Okay? Um, so you have to mention this. And if you run it at those different percentages, you might get a different outcome. So it's, it's, it's important that you mention that you won't get full marks if you don't. So we do not reject the null hypothesis at a 5% confidence level. The, and and therefore conclude that uh, the proportion of smokers is the same across the different age groups. Can you see all that I'm doing is just understanding what is my assumption for my new hypothesis. And I'm remembering, did we reject it? Did we accept? And then I'm just reiterating. Let me scroll up for you guys. Reiterating. Uh, what we were trying to identify at the beginning. That's all that we're doing. Okay. Happiness. Everybody good for? Question or oh, revision exercise three. Down. So what are the types of key points to differentiate between proportion and memory? So it's 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 all about the manner in which the question is asked. So here you can see this is definitely a chart because they are not giving you actual value to say this is more than or less than. They were actually saying the proportion of smokers, right? You can't say, uh, how do I explain? Well, smokers is not a numeracy thing. You get what I mean? So whenever we're talking about data that is not numerical, we then would use this. Because it's the only test that they have. So I'm sure there's other tests. And it's one of those, guys, I promise you, you will never master statistics or even just understanding from coming to a class. You have to go and sit and practice and practice and practice. Okay? Because it's the small little words, at least, more than, okay? only and so on and so forth that will catch you out okay everybody happy with this so this revision uh, exercise three was the only one uh, the only question they asked here so when we come back from the break we'll then obviously do revision exercise one and then we'll call it a day
So if we can be back by uh, let's make it 14 past, we'll then do revision exercise one and we'll call it a day. Next week when I see you, 